to take away that reflection that we can have with the Lord to understand who we are. And today, if you look at the animals, even owls, eagles, swans, and penguins are more faithful to their life partners because they will never go to another partner. When we read in the book of Revelations, when Apostle John is writing to the seven churches, he writes to Ephesus, Yet I hold this against you, that you have forsaken the love you first had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. He says, Consider how far you have fallen. When Adam and Eve fell in disobedience to the Lord, they fell from great heights. And yet we consider and try to fall even deeper today. Let it not be like that. But it is important to realize that behind all these twisted identities, these twisted uh, perceptions of who we are is a lot of deep pain, lots of loneliness, lots of depression, confusion. And on the outside, often it is covered up with a fake performance, a fake smile, or a loud scream for acceptance. There is hurt behind this, the fair facade that we put up. And many of us, even within the church, are living with a pain inside their hearts. Amen. With a loneliness, with a grieving, with a cry. And I believe that the Lord today wants us to realize, please come, use my eyes, and I will allow you to see who you are when I look at you. Now many times when I encounter a situation or I encounter people that are broken, I don't start judging by my own perceptions because my own perceptions are not the right ones. And I pray as that, Lord, please, let me see through your eyes. Let me hear this person through your ears. Let me perceive this person through your perception. So my, I may speak your words. So I may reach out to this person the way you reach out. Let me be your hand. And then we respond in a very different way. Because when I read in Romans 8, verse 19 to 23, it says the creation waits in eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. The creation waits in eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? That's us. If we cannot represent God in this world, who can? The world is crying. People outside are dying inside. Of loneliness, of hurts, of confusion. And they are waiting eagerly till we are ready to make ourselves visible to them. So to allow the Lord to reflect himself through us. In verse 20 it says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not by its own will. It's not that anyone says, Oh, let, me be, let my life be wasted, let my life be twisted. Nobody chooses that. Not by its own will. But because of the one who subjected it. But in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay. And brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. If we fail to bring freedom to this world, there is no hope. 
There's no hope if we sit down on our chairs at home and we, and we refuse to go outside. There's no hope for the world except we who I have the hope bring it into the world. And it says in verse 22, we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until the present time. Childbirth is one of the most horrendous pains a human being can go through. And I cannot tell how that pain is because I'm not a woman. But my wife knows. Because the Lord blessed us with three wonderful children, but she knows that pain. And the whole creation is groaning in that pain, not just for an hour or two, but day in, day out, year in, year out, groaning, crying. And it says not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Now, it says here in words, adoption as sons. That is a term that has to do with identity. But it is a term that in this sense, in our perception today, is very different from what was meant in the Bible. Today, if a child gets adopted, it means that child is taken away from the natural biological parents and been given to non-biological parents, yes? yes? But that's not what happened in the Bible. That kind of adoption did not exist. There was no way a parent wouldn't take care of his child. That already speaks about a deep brokenness in the world today. But in the time of the Bible, when you had a rich man, he had servants. And the rich man had children, and the servants had children. And the rich man would give his child to the servants to raise the child. And the, so the son of the, the, the landowner, the, the house owner, the son would be raised together with the children of the servants. 